All right, good morning. Today I want to talk to you about rituals, demons, and mind control programming. Um, this is probably going to be the most important video lecture I make on different aspects of Christian counseling or helping those that are SRA, DID, be brought to complete healing and fullness. Um, to integrate everything and have one mind, but also to get rid of all the demonic uh, entities and strongholds that are within them. Um, I want to discuss today about what it is that happens in demonic mind control and rituals. Well, most people don't understand, but mind control programming is nothing more than, than something that was in Egypt and is still practiced in all parts of the world. It was created in Egypt uh, through Nimrod and the families at the Tower of Babel, when they were spread around the world, each one of them took the worship of um, the three main gods, Satan, Ashtaroth, and Beelzebub, or Baal, Ashtaroth, and Beelzebub, uh, Ra, Isis, and um, Osiris, whichever gods you want to call them, they have a different name in each language. And you know, the Greco Roman world, Hecate or Apollo. But I've had a person who recently I was discussing, I was bringing them out of it, and um, they said that uh, the demonic mind control was like being made into a voodoo zombie. And they're correct in, in some aspects because what happens is the demonic manifestation is so powerful that it fuses the mind and it takes the alternate personality and lives through them. It controls them, their spirit, their soul, which is their will. Um, it controls every aspect so they'll give their heart wholly to whatever their role is. I want to show you today the formula that's used and has been used. It's never changed, and it's the same formula that's used all over the world. Uh, this is actually the formula. You may recognize that from the greater Key of Solomon, the lesser Key of Solomon, or the Mohian Amakabe, uh, Book of Moses, which is the long, the uh, one of the oldest book of wizardry in the world. It comes from Egyptian, Hebraic, and Sumerian magic that Moses wrote. But basically what you're going to find is that it creates the monarch. The monarch is nothing more than the single ruling entity that is placed within the individual. I'm going to describe every aspect of these uh, sketches right out of the Corpus Hermetic or the Book of Tov, the Greater Key of Solomon, Lesser Key of Solomon. Um, once more, this shows the actual origins and how it's pushed in, what gives the authority of putting the mind control in the individual. So I'm going to work on these things. I'm going to work through them and show you. It's going to be a lengthy video. But if you truly want to be set free, you need to understand this so you can go in. And you, and you need to be able to go in and take these things out. Um, people write books, and they sell millions of books tens of thousands on how to live with people with MPD, SRA, DID. And you shouldn't have to live with it. You shouldn't have to live with somebody with it. Jesus Christ is God. He can bring complete, 100% total healing. When I started this ministry over 25 years ago, I remember working with uh, an individual, who's Joseph Mengele's daughter. Um, she came over with him at the age of two, after World War II, when they brought the uh, scientists over here. And they headed up the mind control artificial programming, you know, for the Intelligence Association, uh, a jumping board at the NSA. And that individual told me that it's not a hard process. They said there's a single string, and if you find that string or a single cord, it holds everything together. And that's what it is that brings it all down like a deck of cards. God would not be God if he could not reverse this. So it's my prayer that you'll watch this video and you'll learn how the mind control programming works. Now, this is Dr. Tom Knott. This video is on rituals, demons, and mind control, mind control programming. All right, so we're going to go to the beginning. Where does it all begin for a monarch in mind control programming? 
And um, no matter what part of the world you're in, the program is very simple. And it's always designed the same way. The formula has not changed. If you've ever seen the Masonic Lodge ring, um, it has the, the uh, square and the compass with the G in the middle. And those four points, when they come together, they create two pyramids, one up, one down, with the god or the throne in the center. The god that sits on the throne is known as Toph in the Egyptian tongue, Baal in the Sumerian tongue. It's known by many names. It depends on what language you speak. And what most people don't understand is that... Um, at the Tower of Babel, when God split the people by confounding their languages, all but a few families, so all of the rest of them, all but a few, were there building that tower. These became known as the purebloods. They took that form of religion everywhere with them around the world. And that's why I just was studying uh, different tribes in South America, and, and they were showing these indigenous tribes that would do these same rituals that are done by people in Satanism here in America or overseas to where they would take phallics and cover it with DNA and blood of animals and then have the uh, women's hymen broke by the phallic. <clears throat> they do that to incorporate the aspect of the beast or the mind of the beast, which is one of the rituals. Now here is where it all begins, and this is uh, from the Corpus Hermeticus or the Book of Toth. There are uh, five books of magic. Uh, really just four, but the fifth one is a representation of one that was already at. And <clears throat> the first one, of course, is basically known as the Book of Toth. And it's where all tarot cards around the world came from. It was given to Nimrod by the gods of this world, and he made a pact with them. And in his tongue, it would have been Baal, Ashtaroth, and Beelzebub. In the Egyptian tongue, it was Isis, Osiris, and Typhus. And um, there were no words, because the essence and the spirit of the card would speak to you and reveal the secrets behind it. The original 14 families under Nimrod's leadership knew what it was and what was expected of them to join themselves to the gods of this world. In rebellion, they did not want the, the god of creation the, the Lord Jesus Christ, nor, you know, Jehovah God, they didn't want his Holy Spirit in them. They wanted to live their own lives, their own way. They wanted the power of the angelic beings. And so the angels that were cast down, they made an agreement with them. So the first thing that was built was Babel, Babylon. Babylon means, in the Sumerian tongue, the gateway by which Baal will be revealed to the world. So it became the center of Baalite worship and where all the gods of this world would be worshipped from. He then built the Tower of Babel. It was more than an astronomy tower. That simply reflected the aspects of the 14 different ranking or ruling entities. There are 14 signs of the zodiac. <clears throat> the first two is the sun and the moon. The rest all go around that, the other 12. Because those are the, the greater and the lesser light created in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 16. The Lord says he would create a greater and a lesser light, one to rule by day, one to rule by night. And this was, of course, we would know him as Satan to rule by day, the sun, and the moon is represented by Ashtaroth. So, <clears throat> many people, when they call her Isis or Gaia or Gaga in the Sumerian language, don't realize that she was actually joined to the sun god in the beginning. She's actually the moon, not the sun. She's the goddess of fertility, and out of her womb will come forth life. She's the goddess of war. Uh, she's many different things. So the, the Tower of Babel was literally a place where the 14 entities would be represent, represented, and by a way that they could worship by ascending the tower. And each ascension meant literally a way of devoting themselves. You would climb the tower through 11 rituals. Once you got past the 12th step, or the 11th step, the 12th, 13th, and 14th would enter into you. The 12th would be Beelzebub, the 14th, 
or, or the thirteenth would be Ashtaroth, and uh, the eleventh would be Beelzebub, the twelfth would be Ashtaroth, and the and the uh, the twelfth would be Satan, the eleventh would be Ashtaroth, and the tenth would be a Beelzebub. Uh, Father, please cleanse my mind, give me purity of heart, and take away any conflicting thoughts. I pray that you would also give me the ability to teach this clearly in Christ's name. Sorry about that, folks. So, they made a pact. Then they built Egypt. Egypt is called the land of the cops, or those that are separated from the God of life unto death. Those that have willingly given themselves over to death. Now, because they did this, God confounded their languages. He gave them each a different language and scattered them all over the world. The people prior to the flood had already been doing this. <clears throat> so God decided to destroy all of mankind. But after the flood, Noah, his three sons, their wives, and Noah's wife got on an ark. Well, out of those three sons, one of them named Ham and his son Canaan went in and sodomized Noah. That's why he said, Cursed be Ham and the children of him. Or in other words, Canaan, let them be cut off from the grace of God for all time and eternity. That's literally the Noahic curse, what it means. By them doing that, they had begun the incestuous curse that had came from before the flood and transversed over across the barrier of the flood into the post-flood by them sodomizing Noah and mixing their DNA with him by climaxing in him uh, anally they mixed DNA and began the curse again and that's why Noah said cursed be they and their descendants for all time and eternity or literally in the Hebrew let them be cut off from the grace of God and their descendants for all time and eternity now the Bible teaches that the sins of the father in Exodus 20 and in Numbers 15 shall be visited legally given over to the children of the third and the fourth generation of those that hate him so, here we find how it is given over. You're going to see right here, represented in the man and the woman, is the tree. This tree represents their lineage, their family line. On the man, you see, is a crescent moon and the sun. On the female is the upturned crescent moon and the crescent moon pointing, of course, to her left. Then we see another crescent moon here, and another one here. But what that means, this crescent moon means the 12% of the conscious that you're aware of, and then you see the rest of the moon is 88% that is dark. Same thing over here. Literally in mind control programming or being demonically possessed, because this is what it is, it's where the demon will possess your mind, all but the 12% and he'll switch places with that is it's a form of demonic possession the demon will put a wedge in between your 12% acting conscious and the other 88% of the no conscious and unconscious and by doing such he can take and stop time for you fuse you is what's called in, in psychology and then switch you down take you down to the bottom and bring up whatever alternate personality it wants to the top now the demon gets control of you, i.e. the God that sits right here. This mat, ma'at, symbolizes the heart. His throne is placed upon your heart. And this staff is symbolic of your spinal cord and your brain stem. And you notice it's been split into two sides. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's literally a seraphim pointing in each direction, the serpent head. So literally the serpents will wrap around the seraphim around the spine and control all the neurological movements that go up and down. Then there is a earth over each one symbolized right here in the center. There is a hell in each one symbolized by the black and a heaven over each one. It's a mirrored system. The left and the right side of the brain, it's called bicameralization, is split through the original onset of trauma. Now, 
the trauma will begin in the youth. This is the formula. Right here at the bottom, you will see the roots of the tree. This is a tree. If you look closely, you'll see it's that same tree in this card right here. This tree symbolizes the person. The roots symbolize the sins of the ancestors. Now you see there's a dove. I don't know if you can see it. I, I can't get a very good copy of this because it's so old, uh, what I copied it off of. But there's a dove down here in these roots. And just above it, you see the four pyramids coming together in like a four-leaf clover right above it. That dove symbolizes the spirit of the ancestors, their sins being transferred via the roots where this person comes from. It's the sins of both the mother and the father that create the new life, which is the tree. And out of that tree will go forth water. So everything you're about to hear is going to mimic things in the Bible. For instance, the spirit of the ancestors going in the Bible says, if you hate God, and if you realize by hating God, you obviously worship self or the, or the spirits of this world, then you're an idolatry. Then God will give you over to that. But he will also give legal authority for that to be the primogenesis of your offspring. All the way to the third and the fourth generation of those that hate him. So they have legal authority and they're born in sin, but also under the curse of the allegiance that their parents have made to Satan or the God of this world. Now, as you'll notice, the cistern in the center, it's a black hole, it's a well, and out of it comes forth these waters, except they're not the waters of life. And what that means is the child when it becomes fully grown as a tree, will be a source of the waters of death. That's why the cistern is black inside. When Jesus said to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, Ask of me, and I shall give thee water to drink, and you shall never thirst again. You will have a wellspring of life flowing up through you that others can drink from, a source of joy and refreshment. The waters that come out of this tree are those of the Antichrist. They are not Christ, but they will seem just like Christ. The God of this world, Satan, appears as an angel of light. Will give them a Christ that makes them feel saved, born again, and comfortable. They will honestly believe that they're born again on one side of their brain. Now, I want you to notice here at the bottom there are four pyramids. A full pyramid, a pyramid that's half, a pyramid that's half pointing down, a pyramid that's full pointing down. Those are the four deities that join the cosmos in the earth, to the earth, and to the skies. They are also represented by the four archdemons. Lucifer here in the reindeer, Ashtaroth in the female, Satan in the male. And, of course, over here to the right, we have Leviathan. Now, in the tree, we see represented over here in the tree, we have the phoenix. That's why it's got the tuft. He always rises from his own ashes. Over here on this side of the tree, we have the false dove of peace. It's black. It's the nightingale that only sings in the dark. So it's not the Holy Spirit, it's represented as Baal, the unholy spirit. Now, you'll also see a clear light on this side, but behind this, a series of mosaic checkers that go in all different directions. Because on this side, everything will be split, divided, and partitioned, and that means the memories will all be separated. There will be no memories. Over here, it's completely in the yellow light. He's got his hands on a moon with a crescent, and the rest is completely yellow, and it's completely yellow behind him, meaning that the false light of Satan will be the one that guides and controls this one on the left. Now, 
This shows the beginning. The parents have both dedicated themselves. They were dedicated by their parents to Satan and the God of this world. To be a living temple for the fulfillment of the five I wills of Lucifer. In Isaiah 14, he said, I will be like the Most High. I will sit in the seat of the north. Um, basically, that is fulfilled in this depiction. The parents have given the child over and has become a tree of death for the God of this world. It is a complete, demonically controlled or mind-controlled person. Now, the reason why I said that the person that told me about a voodoo zombie was partially correct is because a monarch mind-controlled person or a demonly possessed person will do things they are not aware of. Their mind, symbolized by the checkerboard on the female side there, will have been split into 11 primary parts on each side. So, this gives us a total of what I would call 24 primary parts. <clears throat> In higher designed intellects, they will also have four worlds on one side, which will have a total of 48 personal, or what we call alternate identities, on 12 on each of the worlds. And that creates a very designed intellect. But that's a grade above the normal monarch. Just like in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the second coming of the Son of Man. Right now, my friend, monarchs are all around the world, and they are very numerous. This is why churches are given over to false teachings, false preachings. They have truth, but then they have just enough falsehood mixed in to make it a doctrine of demons. Now, what happens? We see here in the beginning, the child is dedicated. Before the parents ever come together, they have dedicated that child. Usually the consummation of a child is what they would call the Feast of the Beast. And it's where both the mother and the father are possessed. She is possessed by the spirit of Ashtaroth. He is possessed by the spirit of Satan. And when they come together, the spirit of Baal and Beelzebub enter into the child. Or you could call it Lucifer and Beelzebub. And when they come in from each of the parents, one takes each side of the brain. That's the roots. Now you see the four-leaf clover symbolizing now that the brain has been split into four quadrants between each one of the four faces of Satan. Satan, Leviathan, the old serpent, and the devil. The devil is self-willed. The serpent is becoming wise in your own ways. Leviathan is the destroyer and the devourer, the spirit of death. And then, of course, Satan is the god of the false worship. He gives you a worship like Christ, but it's not. You'll notice also there's four Hebrew letters above that. That's because that's symbolic of each one of those four entities. Now, at the very bottom here, we will have a place that's called hell. Because the child's life is going to begin in hell. Made a living hell. The parents will begin sexually abusing that child as an infant. Usually by the third month, um, they will be sticking their finger up its anus and, and pressing against the coaxis to, to cause the brain to divide and split. They will do it causing just pain to the child. Then they'll neglect the child. They won't hold it. And they do this because the brain of the child is developing and they want the child to develop. And as it develops, they want the left and the right side to split creating bicamerality, twin brain is what it's called. They do this because the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Let not that person think they shall receive anything from God. So by splitting the child, the God of this world believes that that child will be damned for all time and eternity. And my friend, unless they meet a counselor like myself who can put their brain back together, they will be damned for all time and eternity. I've worked with hundreds of monarchs, uh, hundreds of people, probably over a thousand, SRADID and life together, both sides of the brain, top to bottom, front to back. You do not have to live with, with disassociated conditions. You do not have to live with mind control programming. God can and will take it out of you. Problem is, is most counselors think they know what they're doing and they refuse to learn from somebody that may have a little bit of understanding that they don't know. 
Now, you'll notice in this place down here, just below hill, this is called the abyss. And that's why you see the dragon in it, Leviathan. That's created by the pain and the torment that the infant is put through. And it causes the splitting of the brain at this point. And that's where we're going to split to the left side and the right side of the brain. The left side and the right side of the brain. And then straight up the center is where the four entities of this world are going to rule from. We begin with the face of Leviathan here at the bottom in the abyss. At the age of three is when the personal identity is formed. That is when the personal identity is complete. That is why at three years old they will have the traumatic, shall we say, induction into the kingdom of darkness. It's at three years of age that they will confirm the child to be a child of Satan. There will be a blood sacrifice. It will take some of their blood, but they will also be forced to slay usually an infant. It has to be an innocent. They call it the uh, ritual of the innocence, and it's because your innocence is taken from you. When a three-year-old is forced to murder another person, especially a baby, it will take their innocence. They make them bond with that child. They'll usually have them hold it and take care of it for at least a day or minimum a half a day before doing it. Now, when the mind is split, then they begin the other rituals. These rituals begin happening at the ages of four and will continue from four to five to six to seven. Each one of these rituals here, as we count them off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, create the seven seals of Seba, or Sheba. This creates the mind of the beast. It also gives you over to the seven aspects of the unholy spirit. The Bible tells us about the seven spirits of God, in Isaiah chapter 11 and in Revelations 4. Well, just like God has seven holy spirits, the devil has seven unholy spirits. And by getting these seven rituals done, they will create the seven seals of Sheba. And it seals the person over, creating a new creation to where both the father, the mother, and the antichrist and the child will all rule from. Satan is in the father, Ashtaroth is in the mother, and the Antichrist is in the child. This is also called heaven. Okay? And this is called earth, and then this is called hell. <clears throat> now, you notice it's not just two pyramids. Actually, this creates a system of pyramids interlocking that according to Boole, who was the father of logistical mathematics, will create an infinite number of alternate personalities. You can create an infinite number of alternate personalities through these configurations all joining together. Now, one of the things that's going to be created is the church. The church will be one of the most important aspects, and that is what's created right here at the top. It's actually in the bottom of the brain, but it's on the top of this diagram. The church happens right about the age of seven. And in each of one of these rituals, what will happen is the child will be tortured or beaten. They need to disassociate the mind, and they put an intense amount of pain into the child. And by disassociating the mind, they then create alternate personalities. While they are disassociated or traumatized in that state, they will then do a sexual ritual, usually of sodomizing them. The grandfather is usually the one that sodomizes the boy or the girl, and he shoots his seed inside of them. It's his dark seed. Through this act of sodomy and incest, they then tell the child to blaspheme the name of Christ and to curse the name of God. And by doing so, they will create a church, an altar and shrine inside of the person. In that church will be kept the covenants of the child, his baptism by the Holy Spirit, or the unholy spirit, will be kept in there. His membership in the kingdom of Satan will be written in his own blood. He will also be a member of that church, and in that church will be all the spirits and essence of his ancestors. The essence of each person that does one of these rituals with him will be in him. For instance, the mother, whether it's a boy or a girl, will have her essence put into them, 
by them having to, to basically lick the DNA out of her vagina, eat feces from her anus, and also trans spit in each other's mouths. That's why you see so many people are wicked these days. They'll spit in each other's mouths when they're kissing. That is a satanic ritual. They exchange their DNA. By doing so, it creates an unholy soul tie and attachment and allows demons to take their essence from each other and switch them. It creates a web. Each one of these rituals will encompass bringing them together as a family and tying them to the sins of each other, which tie them all the way back to the sins of Adam and everybody that's gone before them and every person that's been attached to that web. It literally makes millions of people all attached together. And it's called the web of deceit or the web of Satan. The church will be the place where they will astral project in and out of each other. It's a very important and sacred place in the person. Once these seven rituals have been completed, it creates the Baphomet inside of them. The Baphomet, and that's why the church is the last of the seven rituals, because now they have become a temple to Lucifer. They have become a temple to the unholy gods of this world. And the Baphomet is a mixture of all seven of these entities put together in one. He rules over the heaven and the earth and everything in between. He rules up with what you can see. He rules down with that which is hidden. That's why you see the crescent moon on each one. Once again, the crescent moon represents the 12% of the mind that is active, that you're aware of, and the 88% of the unconscious mind that you are not aware of. He controls it. And at this point, he can control what you're conscious of, what you're not conscious of. It's called a fuge episode in psychology. Fuge is when time stops for you. And you have no idea what you've done, but because he controls the 88%, that part of the brain will create a script, which means it'll tell you you've been doing something different. Remember when Lot... He had sex with both of his daughters, and he had no idea. He didn't remember it. He didn't know that they were pregnant with his seed. Demonic disassociation happens when the entity has complete control of your mind, and it happens through incest. That's why they call the key of Solomon, or the key of David, um, is actually sodomy and incest. Because through that act, it blasphemes God and the righteousness that he's created us for. And it creates an unholy temple within the person. So the Baphomet is what's created. At the top is the unholy light. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. The person will literally think that they're a born-again Christian or they're okay. They could have a religion such as Hinduism, uh, spiritism, but whatever it is, they'll think they're okay with the God that they worship. Or Christianity. Now, you'll notice right here in the Baphomet is that staff. Same staff that's in the hand of Toph is here in the hand, or in the body. And you'll see behind it is the dark moon with the sun over it. Here's the serpent, there's a serpent, and this is the brain stem right here with the brain and the spinal cord. It will be a part of that individual and he will rule and reign upon it. Now, what most people do not understand is it's not a single horde entity in them. They will have both the essence of the mother, that's why you have the breast, and all the sins of her and her ancestors, and of the father, and all of his ancestors, but also that of the angelic kingdom. The devil, the self-willed one, the star in the center, the pentacle going up, symbolizing the devil. You'll have the horns of the goat. You'll also have the single horn with the three points at the top. That's called the unicorn's horn. And out of the center of that, you'll see the flame burning. But it's not the Shekinah glory of Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. This is the eternal flame of the unholy spirit. This is Lucifer. When this comes into you, you have become a member of the Illuminati, a full-fledged member. And it's called the Illuminati, K. Illuminati. 
and it means you are completely immersed. You have been baptized in the spirit of Beelzebub. And it's called the baptism of Medes, or the baptism of Toph, or you could say the baptism in the unholy spirit. All seven unholy spirits have now been joined in you. He sits as a throne upon your heart, and he rules. It's the God that rules over this whole world is now over you. That's what's symbolized by that. Now, you say, well, okay, that's cool. Takes us to this picture. The two pillars, which is the sins of the ancestors through the mother and the father. That's what gives it the authority. Toth, or as you could call him, um, Baal, or you could call him uh, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, sits upon the throne. The throne is actually Satan himself. He has four cherubs. That's what the face is on it and the feet on it. Four cherubs that are located in there with him. And then he has this rod, which he possesses control of, which is all of your neurological system and both sides of your brain. He has split your brain and created four hemispheres, one, two, three, four, and a region in the middle that he controls from. So what happens is in order to complete these rituals, and this is what you're going to find is in each one, there is always pain to disassociate the mind, psychological trauma and pain, and then there's an incest ritual. It will usually include blood, an artifact or an item or something that will um, symbolize the entity, and the people doing it will all be filled with the entity already, so he's present. Now, the first thing we see is the abyss or hell, and that's where Leviathan is. Now, I want you to notice that this one right here shows tares and wheat together. And the wheat are dying, and it has the four symbols once again. And this literally means you'll think you're a wheat or a child of God, but you'll actually be a tear, and you'll suck the life from those that are truly God's children. It's called psychic vampirism. That's what this ritual creates in you. Then we have this one over here, which are the false almonds. It's acorns instead of almonds, because out of rod, Aaron's rod budded, Almonds, symbolizing the priest of God, and that which would produce the liqueur, or the, the, the thing that the priesthood would drink in order to cure ailments and pain. These are false. This is a false nut tree from the God of this world. So you'll believe you're a priest, but actually you'll be a priest of Lucifer. Because Lucifer is symbolized in the occult as this reindeer which lives off of the acorns. So you'll be providing food for the God of this world to feed off of. You'll be his priest. The very center is earth, which is right here. The ritual they do there is to give you the false Christ. There is always a moment in a monarch's life when as a child they'd ask God into their life. But instead of that, they got the false Christ. They got Satan. When they do mind control programming, this is Earth, they'll have four worlds that revolve around it. You can look at one of my other videos, which will describe that. This is the one that seals them as a child of Satan and puts the throne over their heart. Then, we have our next one here, which is grapes. Except instead of having the wine of the Holy Spirit, you know, the spirit that gives us joy, you will have that of Bacchus, which is the god of dance, mirth, and merry, and drunkenness. And you'll be controlled by the unholy spirit. Be not filled with wine wherein is excess, but rather be controlled by the Holy Spirit. This makes it so you're controlled by the unholy spirits. It's symbolized by the great. You can call him Dionysus too, but I prefer the name Bacchus. It's more old and pagan. Um, over here, you see flames. These flames are symbolic of the Shekinah glory of God. But instead of it being the Shekinah glory of God, it's the infernal flames of the devil. So instead of being devoted to God, you'll actually be rebellious and self-willed. That's why we have so many churches that do not want to offend people. It's more important that we just make them feel comfortable. I'm sick and tired of talking to pastors that violate God's word. Men shouldn't wear hats in worship because Christ is your covering. And when you go in there, you are to, to symbolize how Jesus Christ is your covering. But 
in Ocala, at least, there's everywhere I go, people wearing hats in the worship service. Those that are leading the services. There's all kinds of violations of God's word. It's because they got the false spirit, the false Shekinah glory. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They have the unholy spirit. And in the center is the night. The night is symbolized by the holy warrior, the one who has his own church, and that's where the church will be, and it's symbolic. Then we have the essence of the father, which is the pyramid up, the mother, the pyramid down, and this is done through sodomy and incest, um, sodomy and incest on both sides. At the top, we have the spirit of the Antichrist, completed. There will be a three-year-old child up here. Sometimes it's up to five years of age. In the center, I don't know if you noticed, but it's a symbol for Lucifer, also the symbol for the god of death. And there's the pyramid up, the pyramid down, but there's also the four symbols, the symbol of Lucifer, the Ankh, the symbol of the Antichrist, symbol of Satan, the symbol of uh, shamanism or witchcraft or Ashtaroth, and the uh, other symbol over here for the devil. In here is all seven aspects of the unholy spirits. There will be, I have seen a minimum of 50 spirits come out of a person, step out of them when you get to this point. When I work with people, that part right there will be looking at me and the eyes, I've taken pictures of people and showed it to them. Their eyes glow white even while they're closed. You can have it be the lights turned off of them and their eyes are glowing white through their eyelids. When you pull that part to the top, that is the illuminated Illuminati part. In order to remove these things, you have to cross over to the opposite side of the brain where the dark side is. You can remove them from one side, but you have to remove them from both. Now the problem is, is most people, counselors, never get above the branches of the tree. The branches are filled with leaves. All kinds of presents that are in there. It's the decorated tree of worship. And counselors that think they know what they're doing will work for years and never actually get to the seven rituals or the eleven rituals altogether. There's a total of eleven parts and they come together creating the twelfth as a whole. All right, this is a lot to take in. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please write me, uh, baptistcur at aol.com. Dr. Tom Knotts, you can call my phone number. Um, I also have SRA, DID, Freedom in Christ Ministry, and uh, Facebook. So, Lord bless you. I pray if you're a monarch in need of getting free, let me know. I, I will help you the best I can. Um, I work off of donations. Most of the time it seems like I'm working for free. And that's why I don't have the money to put together a, a better better video for you. But if you like what you see, you want to be a part in helping others get free. Because they need the freedom too. God does not intend for any person to be a slave their whole life. I pray that you'd find that freedom. I pray the Lord's blessings upon you in Christ's name. Help me to help others. Amen.